Good morning. It's Sunday. We're here. It's time to do church together. So uh, me and the boys are actually, we built us a fort. And we're going to do church this morning in the fort. So challenge. Are you ready for a challenge? Yeah. So what we're going to do is you have two minutes. <laughs> Everybody's got two minutes to build their own fort. So I'm actually gonna build ours a little bit taller. I'm gonna set you guys right here in this little tripod thing right here. And then you got two minutes. All right, ready? Here goes the timer right here. Three, two, one, go. Get your stuff, get your stuff. Oh, get the blanket, I got the chair. Let's see here. Look, our fort grew. Send us pictures of your fort, and uh, I'm gonna send this over to Corey because I want to see his fort, don't we, Liam? Yeah, we want to see his. So, Corey, hey, here it's gonna be in this blanket. Thanks, Andrew. I built myself a fort too. You guys are gonna have some awesome forts this morning. I'm so glad that you joined us for church inside your fort. Hey, we asked you earlier this week to send us some Mad Libs for our Bible story today. And so I have the joy of reading to you a version of our Bible story. Here it goes. It says, once upon a time, there were two brothers who lived with their father who made a lot of money selling pencils. The younger brother asked his father for his share of his father's money. Ooh. His father gave him the money and told him, where are your shoes? Then the younger brother decided to take the family helicopter, leave home with all of the money that the father had given him. The oldest brother stayed home to continue working on his father's realty company. After spending all of the money on NBA 3K, biking, and getting sunburned while scuba diving, he had no money left to buy Triscuits to eat. He decided it was time to return home to his father. While he was still 17 miles away, his father saw him coming home and ran out and gave him a great big hug. His father was so exclamatic, I don't know if that's a word, that his youngest brother came home that he decided to throw a big blue party. He told his chef to cook the best corn dog, the best 
spam with rice and seaweed wrapped around it, and the best cookies and cream double-decker ice cream available. The oldest brother was in the small and orange field working on his ravioli garden for his father. He came home to see his younger brother was home and there was an enormous party being thrown for him. He got really furious. His father begged him to come in, but the oldest brother refused. The, the older brother refused to forgive his younger brother. Come in and join for it. Wait for it. The legendary party. Oh boy, that's a crazy story, Andrew. Especially with all these added details. A, 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 a corn dog, the best corn dog. Oh my gosh. All right, thank you for joining for our crazy Bible story. Andrew, I think that you have a version of the story that you would like to share too. I'll hand it off to you. Let's take some time to refocus and look inside the Bible to see what God has to say about forgiveness. Let's say the definition one more time. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you does not have to pay. Very good, very good. I want to read you a very famous story that Jesus told to a bunch of people that had gathered around him. Jesus' stories always had something really important hidden behind them, some lesson that we could learn and apply to our own lives. So without further ado, I am going to read the story <clears> of... <throat> this very day, this audience shall witness the genius, the brilliance, and the, the awkward silence of the one and only me. Thus Lee, for I, dear friends, am Reginald Fastidious the third, the greatest one-man Shakespearean Bible story reenactor, er, and part-time diaper tester for Huggies Don't Ask, and I am here to perform thusly. Well, I figured this would happen. Th this is Reginald. He comes out, interrupts from time to time in an effort to try and tell the Bible story. Not tell, not tell, show. And today is no different, for I have chosen to bring one of Jesus' parabolas up to life. Parabola? Parables? Oh, no, no, I don't eat cookies. Thank you, though. What? I call this story of a son who makes an unwise choice. <clears throat> Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Part one. And I shall perform it thusly. Oh, okay. Well, good. But first... This is very important. I need your help. You see, you are the sound effects to this entire show. Without you, this show is nothing. So I need you to get into it. Everybody on your feet. You will be my sound effects department, and you will bring my show and performance to life by adding sound effects when I look at you like so. So, so let's, let's practice, okay? We'll see how you're doing, okay? Now, let's see. Listen carefully and say what what fills in the blank of the sound that I'm saying. So if I were to say, Ahoy! I hear a tugboat! Okay, good, good, good. Ah, what's that I hear? Seagulls? Uh, okay, y'all could do better, but you know what? We'll get there. Oh, what's that I hear? The engine of a jet ski? Well, I mean, we'll have to do, uh, to the play, thusly. Uh, okay, all right, well... All right, here's what's going to happen. I, I will, I'm going to read you Reginald's version of the Bible story as he performs it. We hope it's some, somewhat accurate, and then, and then we'll explain it after he's gone. So is every, everybody ready? You guys ready? All right, here we go. All right, I'm, I'm going to read the story. Okay, let's see where we had started at. Okay, this is a story about a story Jesus told. A long time ago, there was a man... Who had two sons? Hello! Yes, it's true. I'm very old. Listen to my feet shuffle. Um, it, it doesn't say anything about being old. Uh, he has two sons, and once you have kids, you're old. Right, parents? Um... I don't think that's oh, right. Oh, look at me walk oldly and listen to the creak of my bones. Thusly. Okay, okay. Now, of the two sons, the younger one seemed wild and less likely to amount to anything in his life. He just liked having a good time. 
Yo, <laughs> what's up? I'm an upstart young son. Listen to my boombox music that I have. Mm, yeah, uh-huh. Let's turn it up louder. Woo! Let's hear some salsa music. Actually, I'm in the mood for electric dance music. <sighs> yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. <laughs> this younger son found his old, old father. And he made a horrendous <laughs> demand. He said, Dad, can't wait until you pass away. I want all of my inheritance now so I can enjoy it while I'm young. Booyah! Now, this hurt the father very much. He wanted what was best for his son, but he also couldn't force him to do anything. So, he decided to do what the son asked. And he gave him his share of the property. My, this is heavy. Listen to the money as it hits the ground. <sighs> that was interesting. Now I have to go take care of a costume change. Listen to me shuffle quickly away. And when the younger son received his money, he immediately took it went off to a distant land, and wasted it all partying hard. Hey, I'm gonna party on some party music. Now let's party! Woo! Wait, 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 wait a second. Reginald, are you listening? Huh? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not Reginald, first of all. I'm, uh, I'm a young, I'm hip, I'm, oh, wait, maybe I am Reginald. Well, whoever you are, the young son spent all of his money and was now completely broke. Oh no! I'm broke! I shall cry my way up to the stage, crying. Oh, well, at least the land is full of food. And then a terrible famine hit the land. A famine? Listen to the sound of that famine. Huh. That's, that's weird. Sounding? The young son was so broke and hungry that he got a small job feeding <laughs> pigs. Here, piggies. Let me hear you so I can feed you. Oh, I am so hungry. I wish I could eat some of this vile, vile pig slop just to fill my belly. Hear how my belly grumbles. Uh, sounds like an old man. Old man? I have an idea. Listen to how I have an idea. What does my idea sound like? Uh, I shall go home. I shall beg to be a servant in my father's home. I know he won't take me back as his son, but his servants are treated better than this. So, the young son made the long trip home. And on his way, he wrote and perfected a soliloquy that he would say to his father that went something like this. Sad violin music? Is that what I hear? Oh, it's definitely sad. <clears throat> Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Luke chapter 5, 18 through 19, nerve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's st but, stop the violence. But as the young son approached his father's house, the father saw him approaching from far off. Look, it's my son. I shall run after him. Ha ha! And I will run while listening to the theme to Chariots of Fire. Here I come, son. The father ran to his younger son. The younger son began saying his rehearsed speech. But before he could finish, the father stopped him, kissed him on the cheek, and said to his servants, Bring my best robes, ring and sandals, and put them on my son, and prepare a party. My son was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, and now he is found. Much to the younger son's surprise, the father not only forgave his son, but also welcomed him back as a valued member of the family. The end. Thank 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope this performance brought a tear to your eye and a light to your heart. I know I was a wonderful and now I must leave. Goodbye to all. Goodbye, goodbye. Hey, hey, since since Reginald didn't bother to, let's let's thank you guys for doing such a good job with those sound effects at home. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a round of applause. You know, well the thing is, is Reginald really he wasn't that far off. This story is often referred to as the prodigal son, and it's it's really about each and every one of us. Jesus told this story to let us know that that when we run away from God, our Heavenly Father, and we go off and we do things that we know we shouldn't do, and we make a choice that's selfish and dishonoring, God is always ready to take us back. Just like the dad in the story. He's always patient and ready to forgive, which is incredible. Now, is that a reason to just go off and do what we want all the time? No, but it makes it easier for us to follow a God we know will love and forgive us no matter what. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this story. We thank you for, um, for showing us and teaching us that, that you love us no matter what. That no matter how far we run away, you are always willing to take us back. We thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for sharing this story through him. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. I have absolutely missed seeing your shining faces and um, getting to worship with you and just dive into God's word with you. This is his love story to us and his love story to you about how much he loves you and how he redeemed you. Um, today, we're gonna be in the New Testament in the, in the book of Luke, chapter 15. It's the same place we were last week. Remember, the New Testament is all about when Jesus was born, his life, his death, his resurrection, and everything that happened after that and how the church grew after that. Um, so we are gonna be in the New Testament in Luke. Jesus is um, teaching some church leaders and other people in, in the community that he is at at the time. So it's always important to know what's going on when you hear the story because it can help you understand what Jesus is telling us and what God's wanting you to learn from his word. Um, so Jesus was with, like I said, with some church leaders and they were a little upset because Jesus made it a habit to love everybody equally. And that means he loved the people that made bad choices, the people that maybe lived different kind of lives than the church leaders did. They didn't have to check every box and obey every rule for the Lord to love them and to want to bring them back to him. So he made it a point actually to hang out with people that thought, said, and did things that didn't please God. Um, and it was kind of upsetting the church leaders. They didn't understand it. So Jesus told this parable, which is a story, to teach them about why he was doing that. And Jesus did this a lot in the New Testament. This is how he taught truths about God's love to people. So we can learn about God's love from studying this story together. Um, so let's get in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what y'all learned last week. So last week, you learned all about the prodigal son. We call him the prodigal son. That's the name of the story. But really, it's a story about a man with two sons. And one of the sons, the prodigal son, comes to him one day and says, I want to leave. I'm stir crazy here. I'm ready to go. Can I please have my inheritance early so that I can go out into the world? Now this made the daddy sad because I'm sure the dad knew that the world can be dangerous and he might not be ready for it yet. Um, he also probably didn't want his son to leave him, uh, but he did it for him. He gave him the money and he went out into the world. So he gave him all this money and the son though was not wise about using his money. He spent it all on all kinds of fun, just all of his inheritance gone. Now an inheritance, that was what he was gonna get when his dad died. That was his half, his share of what his dad was gonna give him when he died to live on. He spent all of it, okay? Even this one right here. And after he spent it all, sadly, it was a time 
when a famine hit. Do you know what a famine is? It's when you don't have any food to eat. There's not enough food for everybody to be fed adequately. So he was so hungry and he had to get a job. The only job he could find was on a pig farm. This is my pig, okay? So he worked on a pig farm and the pigs actually ate better than he did. And pigs, they eat kind of like gross, kind of like your trash or like compost. Like, so they were eating mush and he thought to himself, the pigs are eating better than I am. I need to go home, apologize to my dad and ask for his forgiveness. So that's what he decided to do. Now he knew, he was very sad about how he had hurt his dad. He was sad about how he'd been irresponsible with his money. And he was really sad about what his life had become. But he knew his dad loved him. And so he went back, even though he was really sad and it was a hard thing to do. Now, the great part about the story is when he went back, he found his dad. His dad was smiling. His dad was waiting with open arms to receive him and rejoicing that he had come home. You see, this dad had to have been so worried about his son, and now he knew that his son was safe, and he knew that he had it in his heart absolutely to forgive his son. So he was full of joy. He was so full of joy that I have a son here to show you. Come on out. I have a helper. He was so full of joy that he wasn't mad and angry. He actually, let me get my props. He actually gave him, come on in so you can get in the thing. He gave him new sandals because his feet, he didn't have any shoes. You, you see, he had sold everything he had. And he gave him a new robe. Ooh, don't worry about putting them on, you just kind of slide them on. He gave him a new robe, uh-oh. I got it. Remember, you're facing the camera. Okay. And finally, he gave them a ring to show how special he was as a son. I'm so glad you're out. Okay, and that wasn't where it stopped. He said to all of his servants, go kill the fattest cow you can find. Invite the entire town we are going to have a party to celebrate my son's return. Does that sound like a great idea? Thank you. What do you say? Thank you. You're welcome, son. We'll see you at the party. So, he reacted completely different than what you might have thought. He didn't say, I told you so. He didn't do anything but just love his son and be so thankful that he was there. But this is what we're talking about today. This is the new part of the story. What happened to that second brother? He had two sons, but we haven't heard anything about the second son yet. So Jesus is telling the story, and all of a sudden, the second son comes into the story. See, the second son was obedient. He honored his dad. He worked so hard for his dad. In fact, the day the son came home, he was out in the fields working for his dad all day. But when he came back in from the fields, he heard music and he heard a party going on. He heard people and he asked the servants, what is going on? What is going on? And the people said, your father is throwing a party for your son, for your for your brother because he came home, and we're all and we're all celebrating. Well, unfortunately, the other brother did not feel like celebrating. He was actually pretty angry and upset, and his heart was full of unforgiveness, not forgiveness. He said, "This is not fair." always worked for you. I have always obeyed you. I have never disrespected you. I've always made the right choices. I've been the good son. I like to call him the good son. But this isn't what the Lord looks at. He, the, the father came back outside and he saw his son and he begged him to come into the party and celebrate with them. He begged him to. 
The son told his father. I'm going to read this from my Bible. The son told his father, look at these years. I've worked like a slave for you. I have always obeyed your orders. You never gave me even one young goat to celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours wasted your money and now he comes home and for him you kill the fattest calf? The father looked at his son and he said, my son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but We had to celebrate and be glad that this brother of yours was dead and now he's alive. He was lost and now he's found. So you see, the father could see that he was only called to love and forgive his son. No matter what he did, the father was gonna love and forgive his son. Just like no matter what we do, the Lord is gonna forgive us. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me so that we could be forgiven. And you know that he rejoices with every one person that comes to know him. And that's just like the prodigal son who came back. He rejoices, heavens rejoice when one person comes to know Jesus. Now, the older brother, we don't really know what happened to him. Jesus doesn't finish the story. That's the end of the story. So we don't know if he chose to go back in the party or if he didn't. But what we do know is that if he didn't go back in the party and he couldn't forgive, he was missing out. You see, forgiveness is not holding someone, uh, let me see, it's deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay for it. And so, This father was begging the son, please don't make him pay for it. Please forgive him. Because he knew that he was gonna miss out if he didn't forgive him. He would have missed out on a really fun party, right? He didn't look like he was having very much fun. And he would have missed out on a relationship with a brother. They could have had years together, enjoying one another and having a right relationship. So don't miss out. Choose forgiveness. It's a choice you have to make every day. Whether it's a choice to forgive your brother or sister for bothering you while you're at home or taking a toy without asking or um, whatever it might be that you're fighting about. Choose to forgive because the Lord has so much for you in relationships and love of other people. Thank you for being such good listeners today. Um, I encourage you. I know that we are online so we don't have small groups but i know if i was doing a small group i would say if you have time and i know you have a lot extra time it'd be awesome for you to read chapter 15 with your parent especially the verses 3 through 7 so chapter 15 3 through 7 jesus tells another parable that teaches the same lesson that this story about the prodigal son taught And I think it would be really cool if you could connect the two. So anyway, I love you, I miss you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for spending time with us here. Hey guys, I just want to remind you of how much I miss being with you guys. Um, But you know what is really cool is that we can worship God no matter where we are. So what's really cool about today is we get to worship together And we're not even together. We're going to be singing the same song together at the same time in all of our different houses. How cool is that? You know, our our God is so much bigger than the situation we find ourselves in. And that's why the song that we're about to sing, It's Who You Say I Am, it's, it's so important for us to know who we are and who we belong to. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on. Um, It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. No, no matter what kind of sickness is going around or all, you know, any kind of bad thing that's going on, even good things, you know, none of those really matter. What matters is that we know who we are and that we belong to the Most High King. We are a child of God. That, that is so, 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 so cool and so important. 
And so this morning, I'm going to sing with you, and we're going to sing this song together. I got something cool that I'm going to try. I'm going to play some background music as we sing to this. So uh, if that, that's what you hear, um, it's coming from me. So um, let's do this together, and I'm super excited to sing this song with you guys. Let's do it. highest king would welcome me. I was lost but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the Son sets free, who is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. So guys, I'm going to pray for us now. I'm going to pray for you and your families. So if you'll bow your heads with me. Remember, when we pray, we are talking to the creator of the universe and just spend a time with him. Lord God, we love you so much. I thank you, Lord, that um, Lord, you love us completely and unconditionally. Lord, and no matter what we do, I know, Lord, that you love us and forgive us. Lord, I pray for every one of these children, Lord. I pray that you would um, draw them nearer to you in this time, Father, that you would show them who you are. But Father, I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you for giving us the ability to forgive, um, even when the world says it's not fair. Lord, I thank you for the joy you give us and forgiveness. And I pray, Lord, you would give each one of these children, Lord, the um, strength uh, and the thought, Lord, to forgive others first, Father, and to put others first. Thank you for loving us so well. Thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, Lord. Um, we pray all these things in his name. Amen. 
And remember, if you want to do a little bit of extra reading after this lesson, I would love for you to look at Luke chapter 15, verses 3 through 7. I think you would like um, to see how that relates to our story today. It'd be a really good connection to make. So maybe with your parents, y'all can read it together. Love you guys. Bye.